I'm Gabby. My pronouns are she, her. Welcome to the Happier Life Project, brought to you by free mental health and wellness app, My Possible Self, in partnership with the Priory Healthcare. I am so excited for you to get stuck into this episode. To mark this year's Pride Month, which is all about celebrating and spotlighting the LGBTQ plus community, I wanted to look at what we can do to best show our love and support for our brothers and sisters. Because I think there is always more. If you've landed here, then you're already on your way and I do thank you for that. But I believe in this world, there are so many people that might think, well, I have no problem with anyone. I know it's wrong to show unkindness or prejudice or discriminate against a person because of who they love or how they identify. But is that enough? If we are sitting around the family table or hanging out with friends and hear derogatory words used in regards to someone who is gay or trans or bisexual or non-binary, if we say nothing, even though we strongly disagree, we are not being part of the change. If we're riding on the bus or the tube and we see a group nudging each other and gesturing towards someone who is non-cisgender, and if you don't know that word yet, you will do soon, they might be making that person feel noticeably uncomfortable without saying a word. We don't agree or condone that kind of behaviour, but we observe from the sidelines. Now imagine that person is somebody that you love more than anything. Would your reaction be the same? This episode isn't to encourage you to do anything radical or that you don't feel comfortable doing, but it will, I hope, give you some wonderful subtle pointers on how to best support somebody who is LGBTQ+, or maybe you suspect is. Perhaps you could share this episode with someone you know who might benefit from hearing it, for example. And today's guest, children's author, illustrator and YouTuber, Ollie Pike, is the perfect person to help us get better educated. A light shining brightly, whose mission is to combat LGBTQ plus prejudice before it can even begin to develop by familiarising children with different types of people, particularly those who are LGBTQ plus, through his books, stories and videos under the umbrella of Pop and Ollie, an LGBT plus edutainment resource for children's parents, carers and teachers, which is now one of the UK's leading providers of LGBTQ plus educational resources for primary schools. Did you know that LGBTQ plus adults are more than twice as likely as heterosexual adults to experience a mental health condition? And there's no biological reason for this. So what does that tell you? To quote the masterful Vincent van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. So, ready to find a healthier, happier you and help do the same for our LGBTQ plus loved ones? Let's get started. Children's author, illustrator and YouTuber, Ollie Pike, welcome to the Happier Life Project. Hello, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. I, I forgot to actually include in the credentials. I saw you um, dancing away to Kylie Minogue. <laughs> so, you know, disco <laughs> dancer should be added exactly. there. Exactly. Oh, thank you very much. No, that's not my full-time job. <laughs> not that's anymore. Not the day. It could be. It could be. I was like, okay, I see what's happening. Those are some serious moves. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, my, my background is in theatre, so I did used to, like, dance professionally a long uh, time ago but um yeah it has taken me on this journey of what I'm doing now um, yeah, but yeah okay Kylie did like it by the way like Kylie had, did see my dance here oh my god I know I had to like notification so if she needs a new backup dancer I can Kylie throw it out. Wow, Kylie <laughs> I don't know if it was her or whether it was her team but her official account like let's it. say her yeah oh wow I love that okay we could go down a completely different <laughs> we rabbit could. hole, <laughs> we could rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to steer it back you founded and created Pop and Ollie an LGBT plus equality educational resource for children parents carers and teachers and your content is in the form of books stories and videos over 80 videos 
on your YouTube channel. So how long have you been at this for, Ollie? Yeah, so quite a while, actually. I, mm. I think some people might assume I've only been doing this a couple of years, but actually I started my YouTube channel about 10 years ago. Uh, as I just mm. briefly mentioned, I did used to be in, in theatre and I used yeah. to do a lot of like children's theatre and television. Uh, and I just fell in love with that world. It's so like imaginative and fantastical. And I was just inspired mm. to kind of start making my own stories, my own little comedy sketches on YouTube because it was such a, an amazing platform to be able to do that. And it wasn't until a few years in that I started making my content LGBT plus inclusive because mm -hmm. I'm LGBT plus and that type of content would have really helped me as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made one kind of inclusive video and yeah, it just kind of went viral. People were getting in touch, parents, teachers saying they were using it to help educate the children in their lives. I was like, oh, I think I'm onto something here. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of um, where that started. And that, that first video was in 2014. So, yeah, just under nine years, wow. I guess, that I've been doing a whole LGBT thing. Um, but the channel itself, I started in 2012. So I've been doing it a while. <laughs> wow, amazing. And uh, I read in an article you said like a big inspiration for it was because it was the the kind of resources that you didn't have uh, when you were growing up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so many different things that have inspired me. But yeah, that is a big factor. The fact that I didn't have content uh, like this. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to let you into a little secret. Uh, okay. I am actually 37 years old, which is wild. Um, I've, I've been on this planet a while. <laughs> really? You're such a baby face. I don't know what's going on. I know I weirdly look like a child. I've got like some sort of strange Peter Pan syndrome. Yeah. But anyway. People pay good money for a Peter Pan syndrome, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always throws people. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, yeah. The point no, is not, I yeah. was born in 1986. Uh, and that meant for my whole school career, mm. the whole time I was at school, a law existed called Section 28. Have you heard of that? No. No. So Section 28 was a law introduced by Margaret Thatcher's government. And basically this law forbid the teaching or the promoting of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. So that meant okay. basically that teachers weren't allowed to talk about LGBT plus people in school they weren't uh, allowed to kind of support any LGBT plus students that came out. Like teachers were really scared during this time. They, they, they just didn't want to talk about anything LGBT plus. They right. didn't even want to kind of tackle LGBT plus bullying. So it meant so many children and, and young people, myself included, and everyone of my generation went through school not being told that LGBT plus people even exist, let alone that they're a valid part of our society. So yeah, that's, very that's a little history lesson. <laughs> that's quite sickening, isn't it? Well, not quite, very sickening. And when did the law get abolished? Yeah, so it got repealed in Scotland, I think in 2003, and then a little bit later in England and Wales, I think maybe the the next year or the following year so right. around 2005 it got repealed entirely so yeah that was maybe like 15 mm -hmm. 16 17 years ago you know and it's great that it's been repealed but you know the damage has already really been done yeah because still today so many teachers who perhaps were still teaching who were teaching at the time and are still teaching now they're kind of like yeah. well what can I say what can't be said Luckily, there's been like a new relationship and sex education government guidance released for both primary school and for senior school as well. And there's a little bit of inclusion uh, of LGBT plus people in there, but but really not that much. But um, mm -hmm. so things are improving. But I think that's why it's so important. Like people like myself and other organisations are doing what we can to make sure children are seeing LGBT plus people in their stories they're seeing two mm -hmm. mummies they're seeing two daddies they're seeing mm -hmm. two princes fall in love with each other and mm -hmm. they're learning that lgbt plus people exist basically mm. we've just hit pride month and obviously the spotlight you know during 
I suppose there's, it's, it does get a little bit complicated because you've got Pride Month and you've got different prides that happen, not just in June. It carries on all over summer, doesn't it? But it sort of kicks off in June. I think we safely say that. We just want to confuse the straight people. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Are you LGBT plus or would you identify as straight? If you don't mind me asking. I, yeah, no, I don't mind at all. I identify as straight. Yeah. I, I just like to know because otherwise I'm like... You know, my um, my first best friend turned out to be gay. He didn't obviously come out till much later, but I've always very much been in the LGBTQ plus community that for me, it feels like my community. And I yeah. don't know if I'm saying the wrong thing saying that. So you might identify more as uh, an ally an yeah. LGBT plus ally. There's even uh, an ally flag as well. So you have your own LGBT plus ally flag. Yeah, I've, I need to get that. I've got a whole uh, flag guide actually in a video on my channel and in the back of one of my books. Uh, right. and it kind of uh, makes sense of all the different flags because we've got so many flags now. Right. Uh, and we're always, always adding to it. But yeah, to come back yeah. to your point about kind of Pride Month and all the different prides, June of officially is... Pride Month, and that has to do with the kind of Stonewall uprising in mm -hmm. Amer in America. Um, mm -hmm. Have you heard of the Stonewall riots? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in 1969. Yes, spot yeah. on. So Go ahead. But for any of your listeners that haven't heard of it, mm -hmm. the Stonewall riots was kind of, I guess, one of the first real movements for LGBT plus people in America, and what happened there kind of spread all across the world, and it inspired other mm -hmm. people particularly in the UK, to, to um, be loud and unapologetic as well. But yeah, because that took place in June, at the end of June, Pride, when it first kind of started, always took place around that date. Yeah. Uh, and now it's just kind of known that, that June is Pride Month. Yeah. However, different places will do their Prides on, on different dates throughout the year, depending on yeah. kind of what works for them. And also if everyone did it on the same day you wouldn't be able to go to all the different ones so it's kind of that's like true <laughs> yeah yeah long. yeah so yeah. some along cele celebration but then I think it's also important that it's not just the celebration it's remembering the past and also I know it's about the floor being given to talk about issues that need to be spoken about yeah definitely and, and this is the thing you know I'm not LGBT plus for one month a year so I'm LGBT plus all year long. So it's great that we can, you know, recognise LGBT plus people at any time of the year. Can I take that thread and run with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So being that we're um, a mental health and wellness app, whenever there is a mental health awareness day or a mental health month or anything like that, Basically, the mantra since I've been working at my possible self that came directly from the, the director was, you know, well, yeah, these days and months are great, but for us, every day is Mental Health Awareness yeah. Day. And you just literally, this was going to be my segue in a kind of, you know, the irony's not lost that we're recording this and it's going to go out in, in Pride Month, right? But we should be talking about it all year round, right? It's like, it's great, but... Yeah, but the, the thing is, I always say these months, so Pride Month, uh, LGBT Plus History Month, which is February, these months are always great platforms to perhaps dip your toe in if you haven't before um, and, and really think, oh, you know what, I, I do want to know more about that. I want to learn about it. And it's quite a, an easy time to kind of see things online, read articles and, and learn a little bit more. And just start that journey, I guess. So I always think these months are, yeah, platforms. But yeah. as you said, it's like you can learn about LGBT plus people any time of the year. Yes. Once you start that journey, you'll you'll soon realise that. And, you you know, we, we can learn about anything any time of the year. About pride. We can learn about black history. We can mm. learn about uh, mental health, um, disability rights. There's a lot of uh, important things we uh, should delve into all over the year, basically. Mm, definitely. About a year ago, we released in series one an episode on sexuality and mental health. And that episode continues to grow, like I'm sure this one will, because people find it when they need to find it, right? But through the lens, we wanted for this episode it to be in terms of better showing love and support for the LG... Am I right in saying LGBTQ plus community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Be- yeah. I'm, I'm so used to saying LGBT plus, partly probably because of my generation, but also with my work, Pop and Ollie, because I work with children, I really want them to grasp like the very, very basic level. So uh-huh. I, I start with the least amount of letters and then we kind of add them as they get a little bit older uh, and right. introduce other identities as well. But yeah, most people would say LGBTQ plus. Okay, cool. Say, so that's what I usually say. Glad yeah, we clarified that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just say queer as well because that's kind of a word that some people like to kind of reclaim, if that makes sense. I guess it was used more of a, a slur. Um, yeah. Decades ago. But now it's kind of been reclaimed by younger generations. I occasionally use it as well. Okay. Uh, but actually not everyone likes using it. So it's kind of... I'm glad you raised that actually from the get-go because I think it's things like this in terms of support, like me talking to you as a straight person. Like I've never felt quite sure if I can use the word queer because I'm scared of it having a negative impact because of... Like you said, it was used previously as a slur, whereas now it seems to have, you know, be used more positively. So is it okay for me to use queer in terms of I'm not going to offend anybody, just in general conversation? Like I said, like, once you start learning about it and reading about it, it will just come naturally as to when and where you can use it. Okay. Yeah, like, obviously, you're never going to want to use it as a slur. No, of course. I'll use it talking about as queer people. I'll be talking about queer joy. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just use the word queer because I'm talking about someone who's definitely not straight, but like hasn't totally told the world. Yeah. Exactly how they identify. Yeah. Ah, it falls off the tongue a lot easier as well than saying LGBTQ plus. <laughs> no, we have <laughs> such know? a difficult acronym. <laughs> Why did we do that to ourselves? So you know, sometimes it just it saves time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like like I said, that the more you kind of discover about the community, the more confident you'll feel with regard to using certain words and mm-hmm. what's the best best to say and the thing is if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world like mm. you can just apologize move on or, or or just remember better for next time yeah like the fact that you're trying is like a big win okay do you think as well because i'm sure at this point listeners might be thinking well you know uh i i don't discriminate against or you know i treat everybody the same yada 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 i do nobody any harm but is that enough, you know, it because, and I guess I was thinking actually about something which is relevant, but not relevant in terms of when I was living in Nashville and the, the whole thing with George Floyd happened and my friend, my best friend over there has got um, a black dad and a white mum, and, you know, I no way ever think I was you know racist or anything like that but I thought that was enough but then as this Mm. massive conversation opened up because of what happened she told me about an incident where she wasn't invited to a, a school party one of her classmates when she was in like primary school she wasn't invited because she didn't have the same skin color as everybody else and I thought and again this is just taking it for an example Maybe I'm a parent of one of the other children and I find out about this and I strongly disagree. I might even be horrified, but I don't do anything about it versus I say to the parent whose child's party is, I'm sorry, my child isn't going to be attending because of your decision with this, you know, other child. Just because we say, oh, we don't maybe support that, is that enough or do we need to be doing more? I think that would be ideal if the the playing field was level. Mm. And sadly, looking at our history, it's really not. I'm going to explain this as I explain it to the kids. And it's basically like... Perfect. (laughs) Imagine a world of shapes. So there's like loads of different shapes. You've got like a circle, a square rectangle, all the different shapes you can think of. But the triangle shape, they're the one that is in charge and they have Mm -hmm. designed everything around them to be triangle shaped. So all the doors are triangle shaped, the beds are triangle shaped, 
anything you can think of. And so for the triangles, this world works really, really well. Mm. Um, they don't even notice that the other shapes are actually struggling sometimes just to function in the society that has been built by triangles. And that's kind of a metaphor for our world. Yeah. But our world has predominantly throughout history been built by straight, white, able-bodied people. Mm. And they've made a world that works really, really well for them. And, you know, there's good things about that world. Mm. But it's hard for them to see that people who aren't like that how we're struggling mm. so f- for me it's like I see heterosexual people couples everywhere holding hands down the street like not thinking twice but when I hold my boyfriend's hand down the street I have to think is this safe am I going to get like abused held at me uh, held at me from like a passing car because that happened whereas the straight people would think a uh, straight people from likely I'd like to think would be like oh that's horrible I hate that you have to experience that yeah. but like it might not even cross their mind that that's something I have to deal with. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely does make sense. So I think it's just about putting yourself in other people's shoes. And we have to, we have to do that from time to time to really think, okay, how does this person experience the world? Because we all experience the world differently. Mm, I think slowly as well in terms of like, just because I watched it recently, Queen Charlotte, that have you seen it the Bridgerton spin-off no but I've seen it it's on Netflix right yes yeah, yeah. oh I, I completely binged it but there's um there's a, a romance a beautiful romance between two men the acting is phenomenal and it just warmed my heart and obviously in a, the period times I mean the struggles then were even it had to be all done very discreetly but I thought they did an amazing job of just showing oh, the wow. unconditional yeah. love between these two characters we need more of that, right? We need more of that for you to feel safe walking down the street holding your boyfriend's hand. You know, we need it to be seen more. Yeah, like a, a really good word is, is usualize, which I'll give yeah. Uh, yeah. Stu Sanders credit for. She's the founder of LGBT Plus History Month. It's just about making diversity, I'm going to do air quotations, normal, because there's no such thing as normal, really. But yeah. the more we can familiarise ourselves with, with queer people, uh, we can do that through Netflix shows. I mean, Heartstopper, amazing. So many people have watched Heartstopper, so many young people are now going to understand that LGBT plus teenagers exist. It is really, really positive stuff. And that's why yeah. my, my books and my videos are so crucial, because it's about... Mm familiarizing children from a super young age that like I said some people have two mummies some people have two that is and then as they get older yes. building on it yeah and I definitely want to go back to the to your books in in a little bit again through the lens of like mental health when I was doing my research ahead of speaking to you I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know this from the get-go LGBTQ adults are more than twice as likely as heterosexual adults to experience a mental health condition. Transgender individuals are nearly four times as likely as cisgender. I'd never heard of that word before. Yeah, do you want me to explain that now quick? Yeah. A cisgender person, so I identify cisgender, and that's someone okay. whose who's gender is the same as the gender they were assigned at birth. So when I was oh. born... A doctor looked to me and was like, oh, this is a, a baby boy. And I feel that my gender is boy or male. So mm-hmm, that means mm-hmm. I'm cisgender. So I'm assuming, shouldn't really assume, but I assume you might yeah. be cisgender as well. Yes. Although I was a tomboy growing up. I mean, I had a Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole different topic. What is a tomboy? What are toys? Ah, like, toys, toys don't have gender either. See, this is... Oh, that's, Ye- we could go on for hours about we this. Could, so. We could do a whole series. Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah, but very, very valid point. Yeah, so transgender yeah. individuals are nearly four times as likely cisgender individuals to experience a mental health condition. Okay, so what do you think is some of the reasons for, for driving this? Yeah. I've got some suspicions myself, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so first and foremost, the mo- most important thing to, to know is that LGBTQ plus people don't have 
poorer incidences of, of me mental health. Is that the right way to say it? You're going to have to educate me. <laughs> LGBTQ plus people. Yeah, it's um, it's external stresses, right, that trigger the mental health problems. I think that's what you mean. It's not like just because you yeah, are... Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not because they are LGBTQ plus that yes. they have worse mental health, but it's actually environmental factors. Yes. Um, it's the stress of being an LGBTQ plus person in a heterosexual world. It's mm. dealing with homophobia, perhaps even from friends or family members that could be really bad homophobia. It could be ca just casual. It can be mm. feelings of inadequacy when you look at, you know, how the media is treating transgender people. The transgender people are having a particularly hard time at the moment. They're mm. being absolutely dragged by almost every news outlet, every newspaper and every show wants to discuss gender and it's just like give transgender people a break yeah they're, they're such a small minority of people compared to the general population and they're just being absolutely dragged so unfairly mm. um they just want to live their lives and, and quite frankly a greater percentage of our population support transgender people than don't like, that's the bottom line. We're a country that supports transgender people. We have the Equality Act. It's enshrined in law that transgender people are protected in this country. Right. So fundamentally, we're a country that want to support trans people. But unfortunately, there's some really... really on paper, you know? On paper, yeah. Yeah. There's some really loud, nasty people that, if I'm honest, I don't know what it is, but it's it's a lot of it is fear mm. and an unwillingness to understand and accept mm, mm. so all of these factors combined it probably makes a lot of sense why mm. queer people experience worse mental health yeah and it is for any situation where you can have an influx of positive messages take social media for example you just need that one nasty person who is aggressive a bully whatever it can create so much more damage than hundreds of thousands of positive affirmations yeah, it's true it's true and, and I can speak from experience as well because I get trolled a lot online um from in the beginning it was just kind of like anti LGBT plus people just homophobes but now right. I get trolled a lot from trans exclusionary radical feminists who really want to go to town me I don't even understand that trans yeah I mean trans exclusionary radical feminists that's what they, I think, kind of right. call themselves. So basically, they're people that don't want to support trans people. Uh, yeah, I get told a lot by them. I've had articles written about me. And all of that has really, really affected my mental health in really bad ways. So much yeah. so, I've had to take, like, breaks from social media. I've had to, had to come off Twitter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry for those assholes. That's okay. You know, I'm sorry you have to go through that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult because it, sometimes it makes me think, you know, is this really worth it? Because it's sometimes mm -hmm. really, really horrendous. But then, you know, I also think I love doing this work. I love making a positive difference. I've had so much positive feedback and so much joy from the people that are using my books the way I've designed them to be. Yeah. And also, I have a lot of privilege as a cisgender person. So it's really important for me that I stand up for transgender people because they'll be getting trolled much, much worse than me. Yeah. So I can take the hits from time to time. I think this kind of, in a way, was what I was getting at before when I said it's like doing more, doing like what you're doing and standing up for those people that need it rather than, you know, you could just say nothing. Yeah, I, I, you know, at the beginning of my journey, I was, my first book is about two gay princes, you know, I started writing and creating content about what I knew being a gay man. But I was speaking to you earlier about, you know, the more you learn, the more you are feel more comfortable with language and mm -hmm. talking about different things. And the more I've been on this journey, and spoken with transgender people, non-binary people, people who express their gender in different ways, I feel like I can incorporate that into my content uh, with their help a lot of the time and, and their advice. And it means I can cover a, a much more diverse range of, of subjects uh, mm. in my work, which has mm. been really great. Yeah. The books 
I've not read them, but like just reading the titles, which again, we are going to get to, I was just like, I absolutely love where you're going with this. It's awesome. And yeah, I can only imagine the the impact that's having in schools and with kids and stuff. So yeah, it's it's incredible. Let's talk about some of the areas where we can lend our support to somebody who is LGBTQ+. I'd love to kind of riff with you. I've, I've written down some areas that I think people might struggle with and it'd be great to, to hear your thoughts and yeah, we'll go from there. So let's start with, you suspect somebody is struggling with their identity. Perhaps they're trying to fit into their, and I'm air quoting this, heterosexual norm, um, but you suspect they're not living authentically. How could we help them? How could we make them feel safe? So if they want to talk, they can talk, but mm. without putting any pressure. Yeah. So uh, there's lots of things you can do. But in this situation, I think what the best thing to do would be something really simple, like have a little rainbow badge somewhere visible, like on mm. your bag, or maybe you're at work, you could have a rainbow lanyard, um, because that instantly signals to other people that you are in support of LGBT plus people. And yeah, you shouldn't kind of like force someone to talk about anything if they don't want to talk about it or, or force them to come out. Because if, if you went up to someone and said, you know, if you're gay, you can talk to me, that probably wouldn't be the right thing to do. Yeah. But if you were to be wearing like a little badge or even just a little sticker, even really simple things like your pronouns in your email signature, like he, him, like a trans person might see that or someone who identifies as LGBTQ+, plus, they might see that and be like, oh, this person's open to sharing their identity with me. It just, it just demonstrates some more support. Yeah, the pronouns thing, I, that, I'm glad you raised that, actually, because I've noticed on some people's like LinkedIn profiles that will say their pronouns. And I was like, is that necessary? Does that show support? Or Because sometimes I've, I thought it was, seemed a little bit <sighs> forced. In a way, I don't know. I just felt like it was, right. I sort of, I don't know. I, again, if I'm being ignorant, please correct me because this is the whole point, right? <laughs> no, it's like, it's fine. Like, and this is, you know, this is a safe space. And the fact that you're asking questions is like, yeah, is really great. But again, it just kind of comes back to that whole world of shapes. And, you know, again, this world has been built by yeah. cisgender people. So if, if we as cisgender people can share our pronouns, it just kind of says, I'm sharing this part of me and I hope it makes you feel comfortable to share who you are. Oh my God. I didn't, see, this is the thing as well about, I've gone back to it a couple of times about, well, you know, I, I love everybody. I'm in support of everybody kind of thing, but then it's that stepping back. And so I've never thought, I've thought, oh, yeah. using the pronouns thing is unnecessary, whereas actually you've just taught me that's something I could do to show my support. Yeah, and they're just little signals. This is going to sound really fuzzy, but they're just little signals of love for other people. And who doesn't want that? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like if, if you know, someone might not share your pronouns as a trans person, you might be like, oh, I don't know if this person's going to accept me if they know I'm trans, but just by a little he, him, she, her, you're like, oh, this person clearly supports trans people. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put their pronouns there. So it's, it's just about making people feel comfortable and safe, really. And you can easily just do that yeah, um, with a little trans flag, a little trans sticker somewhere, somewhere like right. visible, but it doesn't have to be a giant flag. I mean, it can be, <laughs> but... So we could yeah. put that on our email signatures, our Instagram handle, all that kind yeah. of thing. And it's just that sort of thumbs up, yeah. if you will. Yeah, if, you, if you want to do that. <laughs> if like, you want to. Yeah. That's great. You don't have, like, no one has to do anything. Yeah. And also it's it's cool when you show your pronouns because it's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to make a mistake because I can see what they've got written here mm, learning so much okay another scenario in terms of coming out perhaps a friend or family member confides in you what do you wish ollie somebody had said to you i mean i don't know what happened when you came out but in terms of what do you wish somebody had said and done to you when you came out what again helps 
a person feels safe. Mm. I've actually got a podcast episode myself about this whole topic. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> I don't actually do my podcast anymore because I didn't uh, actually really enjoy doing it. Fair, okay. Because <laughs> well, I prefer making video because podcast is hard work, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. We don't get enough credit, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of editing. <laughs> yeah. But um, I do have an episode and it's kind of, I think it's like seven tips for when your child comes out. I mean, you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel or if you just search my name on okay Spotify or whatever okay um, but yeah there's a there's so many different steps on there I'm trying to remember them but I think the the, the first one is just acknowledgement just acknowledge what that person has said to you thank mm-hmm. them for sharing it because the last thing they want is for someone to kind of be like dust it under the carpet sweep it under the carpet type thing and pretend they haven't heard it because mm-hmm. it's too awkward it's like that person's just been really vulnerable mm-hmm. in sharing that information with you like please just acknowledge them if you can if it's appropriate give them a little hug mm. tell them that you you love them or that you support them or you'll be their friend no matter what and then there's so many other things you can do like kind of leading on from that um you can talk with them if they want to talk they might not want to talk um you can learn with them about the lgbt plus community you can go to pride events with them you can go to community events yeah, but I would say that the the most important thing is just acknowledge them yeah. and um, perhaps give them a hug if appropriate. Yeah, so, yeah. and may, <laughs> may, maybe ask the question, what do you need? What can I do? Exactly, yeah. Like we all have very different ideas of how we want and, uh, and need support. So yeah, that's a, that's a great tip. Yeah, ask mm. them what, what they need from you. When somebody is being very clearly discriminated against... What can we do here? So do you mean in the sense of like you're seeing someone like shout and abuse at someone or? Maybe it's like they don't get invited on a works trip, for example, and you suspect, you know, they're the only person that's not been invited and maybe it's because they're queer. Something like that would be illegal <laughs> because of the <laughs> Equality Act. Okay. So, but that's, that's an important factor. It's like, you know, have a little read of the Equality Act. There's so many protected characteristics that workplaces that schools, that shops can't discriminate. It's, it's illegal for them to discriminate mm-hmm. against a person because of their race, because of their sex, because of their sexual orientation, because of their religion. Mm. Um, it's probably like one of the, the best things about our country that we have this law because it means minorities are, like people who are a minority are protected by law so know your facts basically and okay <laughs> know your facts yeah you'll be in a much better position to kind of help combat discrimination yeah if you see it happening what if it's maybe something that's more subtle than than say something that's illegal i'm trying to think of an example the stuff that gets brushed under the carpet a lot i suppose that's what i'm getting at where again let's not just be a bystander you know let's show our support try and make a difference there's so many different kind of types of homophobia as well. There's very obvious, like someone shouting at someone on public transport. You know, we've all seen the TikTok videos or whatever, mm-hmm. which is really horrible situations and situation. And, and in that kind of situation, I guess I think what I would do is just go up to the person who's being shouted at and be like, are you OK? Like, just make sure the victim is OK. Perhaps talk to the driver if you're on a bus or something record the situation maybe for evidence as well Mm. um i I think on the tube actually here in london there's some good little tips that actually say can you distract the like distract the situation by asking the question like where does this train stop or um does this train go here so you can kind of diffuse the situation in in certain ways um so i've seen that on posters around london underground which i think is really good is that more about harassment though would you say is yeah so that's kind of like the the extreme end of it but when it comes to kind of the other end kind of more subtle casual homophobia I think it's about just picking up on it and letting people know that that kind of thing isn't okay with you like if someone makes a homophobic joke you can just be like I just want to let you know I don't find that funny um yeah and here's why because and then you can use it as a moment just to share some information and you can just be like, yeah, don't share jokes like that with me because I don't like it. 
Yeah, I think that's a really important point. And I, and I hope all that stuff is dying out. I, I hope. But in terms of like a generational thing, the use of words, I find sometimes yeah. is makes me very uncomfortable. And I do actually, I will say, I, I don't like you using that word. That's not cool. Even if it's not necessarily intended to be whatever, I do feel like I need to correct the, the person. Yeah, like using the word gay as like, I think for people like me who kind of grew up in the 90s, the word gay was such like a, you would just use it like, oh, this book is gay, this film is gay. And even though someone now might still use that because they're like, oh, I always use that word. It doesn't mean I'm homophobic. It's like, Mm -hmm. no, but you're using that word and associating it with something bad and negative. Mm. So therefore Mm. someone who is gay is not going to feel great about you doing that. So we need to be careful about using these words. And they're not bad words, they're not swear words, but just use them with respect. And that's exactly what I say to the kids as well, mm. because sometimes they go into schools and they've got a problem with with that, exactly that, like using gay as a swear word. And it's just about educating them about mm. what gay actually means and it, how it's not a very good swear word, yeah. basically. Yeah, I'm curious in terms of, because I know from experience a lot of, just generally bullying happens at school still, unfortunately. Is bullying illegal in terms of, you know, you said prejudices and discrimination? Like in terms of if we take it into the school, is bullying illegal generally or especially, I suppose, school, through, through the lens of LGBTQ plus children? Schools have to adhere to the Equality Act. So it's their responsibility to look after the well-being of all of their students, including the LGBT plus ones so uh, yeah I would argue that yeah it's kind of a legal requirement for them to to look after their LGBT plus students Mm. um definitely do you find kids these days are a lot more informed because they're more used to somebody in their class having same-sex parents or whatever than say we were when we were kids Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, this is a really positive thing. I feel like I've spoken about a lot of kind of the the negatives and the hardships, but actually the, there's so much positivity mm. um, for the LGBT plus community, particularly, you know, these younger generations when I'm talking to the kids. Sometimes they're like, yeah, yeah, so-and-so's got two dads. How many subscribers have you got on your YouTube channel? Like, <laughs> they're more interested in kind of like my online persona and world, which is really sweet. And yeah, I also just kind of love talking to them about my own experience as well. Mm-hmm. And it's really lovely when I open up and tell them about, you know, how in other countries it would actually be illegal for me to be gay and how I could be put in prison or even worse. Mm. They're really shocked by that and they really don't understand it. And they're like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. So it is inspiring hearing them talk like that because children aren't born prejudiced. That's like, we know this. Yeah, That's a known fact. There's been multiple studies. Yeah, They actually learn things like homophobia and racism Mm. Um, from us adults Mm. so that's why it's so important that we set really good examples and demonstrate openness and kindness basically Mm. what about family (laughs) because everybody's family I think is complicated to some degree but if you're um, LGBTQ plus within the family network you might be lucky you might have a super close family that are really supportive but I know from some of my you know nearest and dearest friends who are queer that I've heard some absolute horror stories to be honest I'm sure you have too and again going back to that how can we best love and support it could be queer person to queer person even you know I don't want to say it's just for straight people how in general can we help somebody who's struggling with their family dynamics being LGBTQ plus? Yeah, um, I guess I'll start with another little positive. Okay, um, good. Because actually a recent YouGov poll demonstrated that the vast, vast majority of people in the UK not only support LGBT plus people, but would support a child, sibling or close family member coming out as LGBT plus, like, hugely Mm. Uh, and even the people who said they weren't sure 
I know from personal experience that when faced with the reality of an LGBT plus family member, uh, people who weren't sure they would become supportive and even people who said they wouldn't be supportive, they do kind of turn a corner and understand because they're faced with it. Mm. So I think that's really great. And, you know, we have to take that into account. But sadly, it does happen where people do have a rift because of their LGBT plus identity and it can that is going to be really really hurtful for people but what's really great about the LGBT plus community is that we often have a thing called a chosen family have you ever heard that yes yes yeah and it's kind of like you build the family around you from your friends from the other LGBT plus Q people you know mm. and you kind of put together like a, a patchwork of a chosen family that is your support network and they're the people you turn to when you need that kind of family love yeah and lots of people have a chosen family regardless of their relationship with their biological family for so many reasons I think it's really interesting that most of the time a queer person isn't born into a family where there are other queer people they're often the only queer person in that family Mm. like they can get them from their parents because their parents are likely heterosexual not all the time but the majority of the time Mm. and so that's why it's really lovely for queer people to be able to come together to be able to learn from each other to be able to chat with older generations and younger generations and just share our experiences and and learn from each other Mm. So I don't know if that's answered your question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, kind of. I think it is just mainly being like, I see you. How can I support you? And I think it comes down to that. I'm here for you, right? I love you. Exactly. Let's face this. And going back to what we said earlier, just wearing that little simple rainbow badge, like Mm. that says that. That says that you're there for, for LGBT plus people. Okay. All right, your books. Could you give me like... A quick synopsis of each one uh, in terms of like just a sentence or two. Yeah. They sound awesome. Okay, so the first one, what does LGBT plus mean? A guide for young people and grown-ups. Yes. So this is our only non-fiction book and we wrote this as a guide for young people. We aimed it at like maybe eight, nine to 11 year olds and grown-ups because... Uh, some grown-ups don't understand all of this as well and it basically just really simply takes you on a little journey of what LGBT plus means it talks about love it talks about sexual orientation it talks about gender transgender Mm. it talks about gender stereotypes it also talks about privilege allyship the first pride there's so much information in there and it's a really great like 101 guide Mm. to the LGBT plus community if you are unfamiliar with it awesome Okay, The Prince and the Frog, a story to help children learn about same-sex relationships. <laughs> Prince and the Frog. Yeah, that's my only book with a publisher, actually. Um, and that one is simply about healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. Prince Henry. So this was my first book and probably my most popular one. I just call this a gay fairy tale romance where class is the discriminating factor rather than sexual orientation. Disney haven't done this yet, right? No, not really. They've done like a few, they're getting better. They're, yeah, they've tiptoed around. They're adding it in like queer characters here and there. Yeah. Yeah. There hasn't been like a queer protagonist in like a big blockbuster Disney film yet. That needs to happen. Princess Penny and the P. Yeah, so this is an inclusive fairy tale and that one actually that one isn't lgbt plus but that's about ah. princess penny who uses a wheelchair and it's just about treating people how they want to be treated right jamie jamie is a transgender cinderella story oh, goldilocks and the five bear families so this one is for really tiny little children who are super cute and they're always really funny when I meet them uh, (laughs) because this one is just about family diversity and it just shows different types of families amazing I think this is my favorite title so far little red riding dude (laughs) (laughs) so that is a story about gender expression 
and gender expression in that story we meet the wolf who wears a dress and it's very bizarre but I, the kids love it. <laughs> oh, it sounds ace. Did you always want to be a children's author? Um, I think I always wanted to tell stories and I always kind of just wanted to play and create. And I guess it's just taken on the form of producing books and making mm. videos, which mm. is really cool. Yeah, it really is. This one comes from our social media girl, Chloe. She's asked for you to give three ways to support someone who has experienced LGBTQ plus prejudice. Yeah, so three things you could do to support someone who's perhaps experienced LGBT plus prejudice is um, number one, you could show visible allyship with a little rainbow badge or a little trans flag um, sticker because that just uh, demonstrates that you're an LGBT plus ally. Another thing you can do is uh, you can educate yourself about the LGBT plus community, because the more you know about LGBT plus people, the more you know about the laws in our country, the equality laws, the more information you'll be able to share with them. And number three, something else you could do is you can simply just kind of be there for them. Let them know that you're a safe space and a safe person to open up to if they want to uh, in their own time. Of course, they don't have to, but you're there if ever they want to chat. Thank you. We'll go to the final question. I ask every guest at the end of every episode to set the listeners some homework based on the theme of the episode. So in this case, Ollie, what is a simple, actionable step that we can take when it comes to supporting and championing the LGBTQ plus community, pride or no pride, that will help us all on our mission to building a happier life? Oh, there's so many things you could do. Okay. Can I set two pieces? Oh, go on then. <laughs> so... One thing you do really simple is just get a little rainbow flag, stick it on your window or on your car or somewhere just so that people can see it. And then number two is the next person you meet, why don't you try introducing your pronouns as well? So you can be like, hi, I'm Ollie and I use he, him pronouns. Absolutely love that. Thank you so much. I feel like I've learned loads. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, and you, you're you just ace, Solly. <laughs> Thank you. I chat a lot and congrats with your podcast. Now, thank you again to Ollie Pike. I really do feel like I learned a lot and took away a lot from that conversation. You know, I'm even thinking about getting the aloe flag as a tattoo somewhere because I've been wanting to, to get a tattoo for a while, but I've been thinking, well, what do I care about enough? And yeah, he's given me some inspiration there. And I'm definitely going to use the pronouns as you might have clocked from right at the start of the episode to show my support for the trans community too. So yeah, I hope Hope you got a lot out of that episode as well and thank you so much for listening to this episode of the happier life project with me gabby sanderson now we have to do our important housekeeping if you are suffering with your mental health there is a crisis button on the my possible self app which will signpost you to the correct information for immediate expert advice those of you who are listening on one of the podcast platforms, the My Possible Self app is completely free to download. You can access all of the content without worrying about it costing you anything. The views expressed in this podcast are solely those of the interviewer, which is me, and the interviewees. The content of this podcast should not be considered as a substitute for professional or medical advice. The Priory Healthcare are not involved in the production or content of this podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please do leave us a review. And to find and follow us on social media, we are at My Possible Self and I've been at Radio Gabby. So please do take care, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.